Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven fempreneurs learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident. Turn your dreams into actionable, marketable, and profitable plans and make your business irresistible. Welcome back, Bombshells, to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle. You're listening to episode number 14, and I am super excited that we are starting an entire month of gratitude theme podcast episodes, and we're kicking it off today with my friend, Paul Coliani of The Overwhelmed Brain. Um, real quick, I want to explain why I'm even getting into this with you. It's, it's just that... I, every time I get back to this time of year, the, the seasons are changing. We're in a season of abundance. It's a very reflective season. And I just had this grand idea, if I do say so myself, that I would interview four people who have a lot to do with why I finally found my happy place in business. So today we are going to start with Paul Coliani who is a personal empowerment coach, author, and host of the award-winning personal growth podcast called The Overwhelmed Brain, as I said. So welcome, Paul. Thank you for being on the Bombshell Business Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I am honored to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. Absolutely. So um, I love that we're talking about values today, which is the highlight. And I think that Paul's a dear friend. He really, truly is. So oh, that you. being said... Tell us about you, just you as a person. Who are you? Well, certainly. And uh, where do I start with that? So I like to define myself by the dif dysfunction that I was brought up in. So I am a result of my dysfunction, my challenges, my healing, my relationships, of which everyone I've destroyed, <laughs> my careers, which everyone I've got burnt out on, to the point where I just looked inside and go, what do I need to do to change who I am? And so that change has been taking place for the last 11 years or so. I started the uh, podcast, The Overwhelmed Brain, about three years ago. I did some coaching in 2009, and I stopped it, and then I went back to it a couple of years ago. And so I look at my past, and I, and I see that everything added up to who I am today, and I feel pretty good about that person. <laughs> well, I sure like that person. So <laughs> <laughs> I like you too. <laughs> he must be pretty fly. <laughs> so let's talk about your podcast. Who is it for? And then what, in a nutshell, does it cover? Yeah, uh, it's called The Overwhelmed Brain, and it's the personal growth show for critical thinkers. And I named it that because one of the things that kept going through my mind is, what can I talk about for hours on end where I don't, I don't get bored? Because if I'm going to do this broadcasting, podcasting thing, I want to be able to talk about it easily and just not get burnt out. So I was like, personal growth, my healing, my development, all of this stuff. I love that stuff. I could talk about that all day. Great. So I have that. Uh, but who, are, who do I want to talk to and how do, what do I want to teach? Well, I love practical steps, like practical information. Give me some grounded, good, solid information. And also, I'm just going to teach things that people have never heard new ways of being and new ways of thinking. And so that's what my, that's what my show caters to people that think more practically, think critically are questioning what's out there now. And, uh, yeah. so, so that's what I cater to. That's how I do my show. Love that. And yeah. so we talk about that a lot in this podcast of just really embracing who you are and, and delivering to the people who need you. So, um, yeah. And if, if I may, along the same lines of this, of today's topic, is that what, what I decided to talk about was something that I wanted to hear myself. And boy, when you connect, when you put your authentic self out there, which is what I believe I do, the people that connect with me the most are the ones that are very similarly minded. Mm -hmm. And those people are going to want to hear more of what I say, finally, because we all want a voice. So that's a perfect segue, um, you know, and this is a sticky part because we cover values in the Bombshell Business Boot Camp, um, yeah. and it's amazing how many people get stuck here. Tell us your definition. What? How, how would you explain values? Well, a value is what you find most important, or at least very important. When when your values are set in place, you're going to have a, a fearless mentality because you are honoring that in yourself. I'm going to honor this value no matter what. A value is anything that you find important or so important that is that it is your primary driver, your primary guide or motivation to do what you do. 
And so when it comes to an entrepreneurial journey, work in general, career, uh, you could have a personal value of like, this is a good example of no one's going to disrespect me. I don't want to be disrespected. If I'm disrespected, then I'm either going to tell you about it and say you need to back off or I'm going to get out of the situation myself. So it's a personal value along with a business value. I don't necessarily say my value in business is to not be disrespected unless it becomes a problem over and over again in my life. So when it comes to um, personal values, uh, this is this is sort of like saying um, emotions shouldn't interfere with business decisions. But technically, they do probably 100% of the time. If emotion's not affecting your business decisions, then you may not be making the right business decisions. I don't know. But where do those emotions come from? They come from your personal life, your identity, who you identify as, who you walk around on the planet as yourself, as your individuality. What am I going to find joyful? What will I tolerate in my life? Values are are bound up in like personal boundaries and beliefs and ideas about what you want for your future and what you won't don't want to happen to you. So you take all these things that are very personal to you and then you bring them in, into your work, into your career, into your entrepreneurial journey. And that's important because if you don't bring those values into your work, you're most likely not going to enjoy your work. So yes, the idea behind um, personal values uh, affecting business values is, is certainly there. And a lot of them are going to um, be similar. If not the same, just like the, I must be respected. I, I demand respect or I only will work with people who respect me. Um, but if you bring that into a business setting, let's just say respect is one of your personal values. And even if it's not, even if you're not the sole owner of the business, say you have business partners or you bring on a leadership team immediately to, um, you know, to create your brand and create your company culture. When you're creating those values, if you have you're highly likely to attract other people in your business, whether it's your business partners or your employees. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if you have a great company culture, you're going to attract people who are like you, that have shared values as you. So if, if you had experiences that have made respect your one of your top values, you're probably going to say, okay, so that in my business or in our business, we are going to show respect to, to each other. We're going to show time respect to each other. We're going to arrive to our shifts on time so the other person can go home because they have expectations outside of work. We're not going to speak to each other in a disrespectful way. So that is a personal value that somebody can bring in. And then it's very easily applied as a business value. Um, and especially when you're more of a solopreneur, I mean, I have a team, it's a small team, but at the end of the day, it's Amber Hurdle coaching and training. So mine are pretty much one and the same. But once you start bringing that team on, you need to consider what's the customer experience that I want my tribe to have. And that's where those values start coming in more into play from a business perspective where you might want to tweak Okay, what are the rules? How are we going to do this game we call business? Yeah, and you yourself, take entrepreneur out, take I'm an employee out. You yourself are your company, regardless of making money or not. I mean, you are your own person. You are your own company. So how am I going to develop this comp company and bring in people into this company that honor me or at least honor my values or at least are, have similar values? Even if they have opposing ideas, that's fine. But do they have similar values? Is this something that we can all work towards together? It's like you're walking around as your own company and you have to assign all these positions in your company. So what do you do? You bring people into your company, yourself, into your life, your, you know, friends, uh, people that you trust, uh, maybe at work or wherever, family, and you build this uh, foundation and you bring this, and this really defines you inside. Like, who am I going to let into my foundation? Who am I going to let into my personal company? And I'm pointing at myself, me. Who am I going to let into my life? And these people are going to be uh, in alignment with these, with my values. They need to be safe. They need to be respectful. They need to be honorable and in integrity. A lot of similar words. And, um, you know, they need to be kind and 
all these other things. So when you're doing that in your own life, when you're bringing these people in your life and you take that into business, you take this person that you've built, this foundation that you've built into business and you keep that, then what you might find is that the people around you in business don't always align with you. And you're going to have that no matter where you go. But for the most part, are you still able to be yourself, your authentic, true self in business, in your career, in your right, your venture? And if that's possible, if you can still be that person in any business, then you're good because now you're still in your own value. So when somebody does violate a boundary, violate a value, and uh, you have an opportunity to act from this place in alignment with your values, and then you get to stay there, they don't fire you or anything like that, then you realize, oh, this is good for me because even though I'm getting opposition, I can still be myself and it's not going to create a problem. And, and that's very helpful. And when you can find that situation or create that situation for yourself, then you have something that could be a great success in many ways, not just monetarily. And in the same, an employee can respectfully go to their boss and say, you know, I don't feel like our values are being honored in this decision that we're making in the business. And and then again, you've already agreed that that's an important thing. And so it, I think it just shifts everybody back to center. But how do we get there, Paul? How, what, how do <laughs> well, we get there? How do you determine what your values what are? What you're defining right there is the perfect world. Hey, this is the bigger vision for the company. Okay, we all agree then. I mean, that's a <laughs> that's just a perfect world, utopia. It's not that easy? It's never that, it really isn't ever that easy because there's always someone or s several someones who are going to disagree and they're going to bring up their points and hopefully nobody takes things personally and they do see their bigger vision and they move towards that vision. Great. That all happens. But when it comes to like defining what your values are, um, the most important thing to do is really along the lines of figuring out what's most important to you in every area of life. So like you and I went through this and you know how to do values and you've probably taught values for many years. Um, the idea is to find out, okay, what's important to me about X? What's important to me about getting a job, having a career? Um, what's important to me about my relationship, my love life? For example, um, respect comes up for me a lot in a lot of these things. It's a high level thing. If there's no respect, then everything else won't matter. Like if I'm happy here, happy here, happy here, but I have a top level value of uh, respect getting violated, then nothing else is go really going to matter, which is why we get burnt out, Right. which is why we quit, which is why we do these things because other values aren't being in, or aren't in alignment with us. So how do we get that in alignment? It's really, it's really easy, but it is a process and it takes uh, about an hour or two. And it, it's taking an area of life that you need the most work in, most improvement in. So you have all these values that start, you start writing down and you go, okay, I've written about 20 or 30 or maybe a hundred. Just all these things. Now, are these like must haves or are they just very important and you hope you do have them? This is where you start winding it down and, and narrowing it down to another list of like, what, what really are my must haves? You write all those down and you go, okay, what's most important? You start doing, you start doing your hierarchy. You're putting everything in order. So you might have to do this at like on your computer where you can take words and take them out of the last place, put them in the first place. What's most important? Is that more important than that one? Is that more important than that one? And once you do that, you ask yourself like a final question of, um, okay, what else is most important to me about, for example, relationships? And then you see if you can come up with anything else. The idea behind all of this is just to figure out what you want for yourself. What, what would be your perfect relationship? What would be your perfect career? Well, I must have weekends off. Um, I must be able to, you know, have trust and respect for my coworkers. Um, I want to have medical insurance or whatever. And are those so important to you that you're willing? And, and I'm going to use the word fight. Uh, not that I mean fight, but you're willing to fight for them. You're, you're willing to go to battle to honor that in you. That doesn't mean you attack anyone. Mm -hmm. It just means you 
honor it in yourself to the point where you will walk away. You're ready to walk away because you want to honor these values. And this is a, a story I'd like to share real quick is that when my wife and I, when I was married, um, in late 2000s, we went broke and homeless pretty much from all that law of attraction stuff. <laughs> so we brought that, <laughs> we brought that into a life, broken, homeless, literally standing in line at the soup kitchen every day. And I finally got a job. So I went to this job and I was enjoying it. And the way they sold it to me, I was like, Oh, this is going to be fun. About three or four weeks into the job, they said, okay, now we're going to change what you do. And we're going to put you on phones and you're going to answer these calls. And I'm like, that's not what I want for myself. And I, I started feeling this violation inside of me. Like, this is not what was sold to me. This is not what I wanted. And I really had to come to terms with this because this, and, and I felt imprisoned suddenly because now here I am. I have to make money or go back to being broke and homeless. And it's like this battle went on inside of me. And I was like, what are my values? Oh, I, I, this is where you refer to values. What are my values? You know what? I need to be in integrity with myself. It's one of my highest values. I need to be in integrity with myself. And being here is not an integrity. And I was like, you know, I called my wife from work. If I choose to leave, is that going to like be the worst thing in the world? And she's like, I'll support anything you do. And I was like, really? A tear came to my eye and I was like, wow, this is it. I need to quit. I, I went up to my uh, supervisor and I said, I'm leaving. And he's like, what? And I quit. And I went home and yeah, the very next day we we're in the soup kitchen, but I felt so good inside myself. I honored myself and that's where values really take place and are, are so important is that once you write all these down and realize what you want for yourself, what's most important to you and you stick by it, it always leads to a happier place. I'm not saying that you'll have, you won't have challenging things, but you're fulfilling something way down inside of you. And when you fulfill that, it doesn't matter if you quit your job and you need the money. It doesn't matter all this other stuff. Things will work out because you're driven in a direction that makes you happier. Now there's, you know, there's kids involved and there's other people involved. And sometimes you have to make sacrifices and compromises. And there are things like that. But just to get this clear in yourself, so you're following a path that fulfills you is going to give you more success almost always. I would say always than, than not. And I, I have more stories to share about that, but every time I followed and stayed in alignment with my values, I've always, it always led to a better place. Everything's a trade off, right? You, you, it's, it's this or that always in life. And you chose to, to stand by your values as opposed to stand by your next paycheck, which is an extreme example and not everybody would have that option, like you said, because they've got kids or, or whatever. Yep. Um, but look where that led you. I think that's the important part is, and we're not to the end of the story yet because life's not done for you. So yeah. there's no telling what that one decision to stand by your values is going to lead even beyond today for you. Absolutely. And you look at it, I mean, I can understand this. Somebody's going to come up to me and go, yeah, it worked for you because it worked. I mean, that's, that's what I said. That's why I t say to other people, well, they're teaching that on stage because it just worked for them. If it didn't work for them, they wouldn't be teaching that on stage. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that, um, 90, 99% of the people that do what you say are going to fall on hard times and, you know, whatever. And you're only talking about it because it worked, but over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, I've tested this. I've yeah. tested this over and over again where if I stay in alignment with my values, if I honor myself, what happens? We always jump to, this is where we go, a lot of us. We always jump to, what might happen if I do this? What might happen if I quit? Well, I might end up back at the soup kitchen. If you allow your thinking to go that far, then you will stop yourself from honoring, your, honoring yourself every time. Because your thinking is always going to go into the the most fearful, or a lot of times, fearful place. If I had thought, yeah, but I'll end up back at the soup kitchen. Yeah, but what's right for me now? And that's a very different place than what might happen if I do it. And I understand. Well, bombshells are overthinkers. 
Okay. <laughs> they're type A. They're super driven. They are control freaks. I got you, girl. I know who you are. Um, and, and I will put myself in that category for the most part. I hope that I've learned better over the years, but it is a scary place to be when you are not in control in that moment. For someone who is a little more scared about saying, these are my values and I don't care what the end consequence is because ultimately I know my values are going to guide me and into the right place in life or business or whatever. What do you do when your values are tested or challenged yeah. from a practical standpoint? Yep. So if you've created a list for yourself and you have like the top three values that are must haves in your life, my suggestion suggestion is to follow that religiously like no matter what but with exception so you have these values with exception you know what i've been following these every time and this time i'm going to make an exception so yes you're that's part of step one here which is um knowing your values gives you kind of this signpost this beacon to follow Taking it to the point where you honor them no matter what. I mean, if, if you feel this violation of a personal boundary, of a belief, somebody's, you know, doing something against your beliefs, some sort of violation is, it's going to feel like resistance in your body. Whatever was free flowing before is not flowing anymore. And the emotions will build up and build pressure and you'll feel it. So then you go, okay, what is being violated in me? And then the next question is, what do I need to do for me? What is the right thing to do for me? Well, what if I could do anything? That's another question. What if I could do anything without consequence? Then what would I do? That's a great question to ask yourself. Okay, I went through all that and I have these answers, but I'm still not going to do it because I'm afraid of the consequence. And and this is where we take ourselves out of the present moment and and create some fantasy that may or may not happen. It could. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we think we know what's going to happen. And sometimes we're right. And a lot of the times we're not because I've tested it. And most of the time, let me say this, all the time I was wrong. I was, I was shocked. Every time I've tested this, I was wrong every time. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm go- not going to be wrong. But every time. Because I just painted this worst case scenario. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to get fired or she's going to leave me or you know whatever part of my life I was working on. So, okay. I need to stay present here and do what's right for me. Yes, that's easy to say. What's the next step? The next step is to think about what you fear. Okay, so you get fired. How is that bad? They're going to say, that's a stupid question. Um, but I'm going to say, yeah, but I want you to visit it. I want you to understand what's really driving your behavior from the most primal place. How far does this fear go? Well, is that your real fear? Well, yes, no. Your real fear may be, is not having money. You're going to a place inside of you where it originates, the fear that originates. And then, you know, we put a package or, you know, we wrap it up in, I must have this job no matter what. And then when we get stuck in that place, I must do this no matter what. And if we're stuck in that place, then where do you go from there? You're just, you're stuck. So that's why I like to take people, okay, uh, first things first, do what's right for you. Yeah, but I don't want to because I'm afraid of what might happen. Okay, what might happen? Then I take him through the worst case scenario. So when you when you go down to that powerful of a a true fear, and yeah. and you know even just sitting here listening to you go through that, I, I'm like, wow, gosh, that's absolutely what happens. And I mm-hmm. guess I always go the opposite way. You know, when we have like in, in my glamour goals program, we we kind of go through the same process, but the opposite direction. Like, why do you want that? Okay, mm, good, well, yeah. so you can what? So you can what? And good. I just keep asking. I call it the so what game. <laughs> um, but to go backwards into where is this fear coming from? That's all the more reason to genuinely define your values so that you have something equally, if not more powerful than your fear in which you can make decisions and live life because the things that they deal with on a day-to-day basis, is it the thing? Yeah. It's not the thing. That's exactly And, it. and I can, if I can also add real quick, my, we, we decided that my faith was my number one value. Yes. Um, and people who know me know I'm not especially religious, um, but I'm very, very spiritual. Um, what I have found in life is that 
I come up with all the terrible things that can happen and all these fears. And I think that I can absolutely completely control my life with my values, without my values. And I, I appear into the future. Hmm. Um, and what really happens is what God has prepared for me is so much greater than what I could have possibly come up with in my wildest imagination. And so sometimes you just have to let go of that fear and say, this is what my life is guided by. And I'm going to stick with this over here because that never fails me yeah. and let go of all that fear yeah. with, with the anticipation and with the hope. And you don't, that's not law of attraction. That's just that. I think that's just how life works. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. Fear is better for me out there and I'm not going to let, I'm not going to start every day that I wake up. I'm not going to squander that day. I'm not, I will yeah. not. And so, I mean, I will tell someone to, you know, take a hike <laughs> in a heartbeat because you are not screwing up today's chance to live fully. If you look at each day as an individual opportunity to do what you were supposed to do on this earth or to love the way that you're supposed to love or to share your talents the way that only you can with the world. Otherwise, what's the point? That's beautiful. I mean, what you just said is everything in a nutshell. And that's a, a, a amazing way to look at it because what if we're all brought here with our gifts, with our skills, with our talents to connect with other people with similar gift, skills, and talents? And if And if that's the case... Then there's absolutely nothing wrong with who you are. Absolutely, and and so when I when I describe what a bombshell is, you know, you think when you think bombshell, you think Marilyn Monroe, like some just mm-hmm. like uh, amazingly stunning woman who who walks in the room and everybody goes wow. Hmm. But to me, a bombshell is a woman who's bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident in in who she is. And and so Marilyn Monroe knew who she was. She mm-hmm. knew what she was, I mean, she was an entertainer and she got herself and that's why she could sell herself. That's why she stayed confident. And so to, to me, I mean, you just, you just summed it all up. We're all here to connect with each other. And, and the way that I love to do that is through my profession. So I don't try to speak to women who aren't business women because I don't know how to connect to them in a meaningful way for them. Hmm. And so, I mean, I can certainly understand and be empathetic and and do my best, but that's never been who I am. So again, good for you, not for me. I don't think that's a bad situation to be in. So if you understand your values, then you can start navigating the way where you get to actually live out who you're supposed to be in this world and connect with other people in a meaningful way. So that if you do get hit by a bus tomorrow, as I love to say, when I'm talking to my bombshells, you've done what you're supposed to do. You've lived in a big way. You have no regrets. And, and it all full circle comes back to understanding what it is that matters most to you in life. So what can a bombshell do after she's figured all of this out, after she's figured out what her values are, what's the, the thing that she can do that will absolutely fast track her to success? What's something applicable she can start doing like this week that will be something that she can see immediate change? That is a good question. Now I've got to be the guru. <laughs> That's why I called you. Mom. All right. So <laughs> let me crack my knuckles here. So here's the thing is, as soon as you start honoring yourself in a way that you haven't before, your world accelerates and expands like nuts, <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. Because it, once you're in alignment with this, that, and you put yourself out there as this person in alignment with those values, starting today, it happens. So is there something applicable? Yes. You can absolutely um, just make a list of values. You don't have to go through the whole process. Just make a list of what's important to me about having a good day. Well, if I have a good day, uh, I'll listen to my favorite band or I'll make sure I have, like for me, I love iced tea. I'll make sure I have a cold glass of iced tea. And that to me is a good day. So when I actually do that, man, it feels good. I'm in my, I'm in my zone. That's good. That's a small thing. It's like, um, when I teach honoring personal boundaries, you do little things that help you honor your personal boundaries, especially if you've never done it before. A lot of this stuff, if you're having trouble or a problem or a challenge in any area of life, is because you're doing things that you always do. You know that saying, you do the same thing over and over again. And you just eventually go insane, you'll get burnt out, 
you know, something will happen that you won't, that won't lead to success unless it's leading to success. Now, whatever's working for you today, good. Keep at it. You're doing something right. Whatever you can look at and go, it's not working for today. That's what you want to start changing. So you look at, well, what do I do? It's hard to sometimes identify what you do because you're in it. It's like, you're always doing it. You're doing the things that you think are right. So this is, this is a matter of breaking down your decision-making process throughout the day. I'm about to make a decision to make this phone call and, you know, whatever the thought is, like, oh, I don't really want to talk to this guy. You know what? I really don't want to talk to this guy, so I'm not going to call him. Whoa, what is Whoa. that? <laughs> I have permission to do that? What? <laughs> what does that change? How does that affect an outcome? Yeah, but he's a big, he could be a big client. Yeah, but you want to pull in this big client that you don't like and then you're going to have to deal with on a whatever daily, weekly basis. You start making these decisions differently because before you were basing them maybe on a fear. Like if I don't call him, I won't make money. Well, I'll tell you what happens. When you start honoring yourself in this way and doing things a little bit differently, this might be esoteric, but you start opening up the space for other things in your life. This, yes. this guy that you don't like, that you don't want to talk to, he goes away because you don't call him and now he's no longer a client. But this fantastic woman comes in and you want to work with her. It's like, wow, I wouldn't have had the space for you if I took this other person on. It sounds... And, and this is totally off business topic, <laughs> but what you just said reminds me of what I tell my girlfriends Oh, at least my single girlfriends all the time. Why are you wasting your time with a man <laughs> who is tying you up when the man of your dreams is out there looking for you? <laughs> Why are you doing this? And it's because they're lonely or they're, you know, they just, they need a man in their life or whatever. But now I'm going to use the Paul version. You are opening up. If you break up with this person, you are going to open up the space for new opportunities. <laughs> so, so you're, you, you're saying, Saying that the actionable step a bombshell should take this week is to just in the day for the day find opportunities to start applying a value system, even if it's not completely fleshed out yet, but just to make intentional decisions and then understand where is that coming from, what's the value there, what's why am I making this decision, and start practicing in small ways that maybe are a little less, um, have a little less to, to lose. Is yeah, a little, a little less impact. And what that does is you're going to notice it right away because the feeling comes over you right away. Like, well, I just did something very scary and I survived and, <laughs> and I feel actually more empowered and like, wow, I could probably do that again, even though it might be scary the next time, but it gets less and less scary. And Again, your world just opens up. I remember the the day I spoke up to my two bosses thinking that I was going to get fired uh, and it turned out to be the opposite. It's like, wow, I got over this hurdle. I spoke up to them against them and suddenly I I got a raise the next week. It was like, what? What? This is not, I've lived my life out of fear, not speaking up for myself, not honoring myself. And I just thought that was the safe path. The safe path is always the best path. It, it doesn't turn out that way. If it feels like a violation inside of you, start honoring yourself and honoring yourself in little ways so that you get this feeling. The feeling creates the momentum. The momentum builds the shift inside of you and will continue to improve and you'll find success that you've not found before. I, I, this is the experience that I've had. I've lived it. I've done it over and over again. And I highly recommend that you start doing it today. And it's a little scary, but... You know, you take little leaps of faith and big changes happen. I love it. Okay. So I'm so fortunate that Paul is a friend of mine. <laughs> and so I get to, you know, have access to this wealth of awesomeness <laughs> all the time. But for you out there, um, Bombshell, I encourage you to go to the overwhelmedbrain.com. We're going to have that, um, that website and then all of, Paul's um, social links to so Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. His podcast link will have all of that in the show notes. But Paul, how can people work with you? What what are the options if somebody hears this and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I need, 
I mean, I just feel like we could talk about this for, you know, the next <laughs> week and still not be done. So how can people interact with you so they can just take this to the next level? Sure. If they want to work with me, if you guys want to work with me, anyone out there, uh, you just go to theoverwhelmedbrain.com and click on Coach with Paul. A big old mugshot of me with a green button below it. And um, you can see what I offer. You can see uh, what I do. It'll explain my process. I'm, I'm pretty laid back. I'm pretty authentic. Um, what you hear now is what you get. And uh, I, I don't like to, I'm not one of those, I just heard this today from one of my clients. She goes, um, I'm going to fire. <laughs> I'm not saying this is what you should do. I'm saying that this is what she said. I'm going to fire my therapist because when I go into the, my therapist, all she does is go, oh, you poor thing. Ah. Oh, oh, that must be so hard. And I'm like, really? That's what they, that's what she's doing. <laughs> so I'm not that guy. I just observe. I listen. And um, I pick things out and then I feed them back to you and you go, oh, okay, I get it. So yes, yeah, so if you want to work with me, great. Go to theoverwhelmedbrain.com, click on Coach with Paul. And um, I'm not trying to sell this, but there's a, a worksheet on values called Stop Self-Sabotage that I offer. So if they don't, if, if, you, if you don't work with Amber and you want that worksheet, then you can find that on my website as well. Well, and you know, it's it's a funny thing that, People can work with me and you at the same time, or sure. it might be the season where it's time to work with you. And I can say just from personal experience, and I know most of of the of the bombshell community is is this way. We we think we know, and I thought that I knew, and you were in a very gentle, um, flowing type of way. You were able to help me understand that I didn't know all that I thought that I knew, <laughs> and so I th- I think that is a very important trait for somebody who works with a, a real bold, driven, type A type personality. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a condescending experience. It's it's a very respectful but challenging experience that I think anybody could take advantage of. So, Paul, thank you so much for being on the Bombshell Business Podcast and for being my first uh, interview of the <laughs> podcast. I, I appreciate you very much. I am honored. Thank you so much and for all your kind words. That was very nice of you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, bombshells. Uh, make sure you go to amberhurdle.com forward slash podcasts with an S for these show notes and all the links that we've talked about will be um, in those show notes and how to find Paul and all that good jazz. And don't forget to meander on over to iTunes and leave a rating and review and just tell other women in business why this podcast would be a great fit for them. And that will help me do more of what I love to do in helping professional women. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit amberhurdle.com for more resources and be sure to tune in again. Cheers to you, Bombshell.